Hey YouTube, it's Matchy here um, with another hopefully quick tutorial. Um, this one is about why I love uh, the perspective tool so much in Clip Studio Paint, aka uh, Manga Studio. Um, now I think the official name is Clip Studio Paint for all versions going forward, so um, that's what we're going to be calling it going forward. Anyhow, so yeah, the I, I love the perspective tool in Clip Studio. It's so handy and so helpful, and it's the best in any software drawing program I've found to date. Um, it, it works the best for me, um, and I'll explain that shortly. Um, but yeah, I just I just would like to say that I definitely, even though a lot of my art now has has being finished traditionally, um, I still do a lot of my roughs in Clip Studio Paint and. Um, the reason why I use Clip Studio Paint specifically is a, a lot of it boils down to the perspective tool works in this program like it works in no other program and it's like indispensable for um, drawing perspective. Um, and what the perspective tool is, is it's basically just guides. It's not a cheat. You still need to know how to um, work with perspective. So it's not going to it's not going to do any work for you. It Basically, the difference between using this and doing it um, traditionally on paper is that you know your vanishing points go typically will go way, way, way off off the page, and it requires you to you know do a lot more work when you do it traditionally. And this way, the guides are there, and it just works for you. So, and you know, there's still a lot of work to do afterward. So anyway, let's let's talk about that tool. Okay. Um, once Manga Studio went from four to five, they added this. They added it into the ruler palette. I think that's when this happened. So you'll see there's perspective rulers here in the ruler palette, and that's um, one of the ways to get to them. And when you select this perspective ruler, it will you can make you know perspective guides on your on your um, layer. But I noticed you can just start making these all over the place. They get a little wonky and and difficult to to adjust and I, I don't know there's it's it didn't work the way it used to work so I um, I typically just avoid I just avoid that way of getting to it all together what I actually do is um, I come up here into the layer drop down menu and I come down to let's see where it is ruler it says ruler dash frame and and I'm just on a regular um, raster drawing layer and it says creates perspective ruler and then it opens up this window here which asks you if you want one point two point three point I think for this demonstration I'm just going to use two point um, the principles I'm going to talk about should apply to all of them um, so then you're given something like this which let me back out. It actually filled the entire page. I didn't wasn't expecting that. So what it, what it gives you is is your two point perspective, which here's your horizon line, and then here are your two vanishing points, which you put at the very end of the page. Which you know we can edit that. Um, so cool. So when you click on this, um, it you start you get all these little handles, so you can move the horizon line and you can move the vanishing points and then here if you have this circle you can use this to to move this guide which doesn't really change um, where the vanishing point is but if you're lining it up to something existing on your drawing that's helpful and you have that for all of these and then if you grab the ones that look like little pluses you can adjust Oh, you can that was not what I thought it was. You can adjust this line. You can adjust the line, but it also moves the vanishing point while you adjust the line. So maybe if you get this, I'll show you in a second. But maybe if you get this kind of to where you want it, and then you need to adjust the angle of that line. It automatically adjusts the vanishing point for you. So and then this allows you to rotate. So that's the basics on how it works, and then what happens is, is when you go to draw on the layer, your your pencil—it's like a ruler, 
that automatically conforms your drawing to that perspective. So, I mean, that's it works pretty much how you expect it to work. Um, and I don't really think that's any huge mystery, and that's not what is really selling me on this particular tool, because like Sketchbook um, and probably some other drawing softwares have something similar to this, but here's what's, here's what's cool about it to me is let's, um, oh, I want to show you one other thing before I show you anything else. Um, one, one thing is, is when you want to come back and move these lines again after you've done this, I had a hard time figuring out how you do that. Um, until I realized you come up here to this selection tool right here that looks like a little cube and I'm not sure what it's it's the object selection tool I'm not sure why this is the one this is a little different than it was in previous versions but then that brings you back to this mode where you can move these lines around so anyhow what what's cool about it to me is and this is where the other programs are lacking is what if you have a drawing? They you can set up in the other programs you can set up your vanishing points and you can set up all that up, but there's no way to align that to an existing drawing. So say you're bringing in a photo that you want to you want to, you know, match that perspective of that photo of what's what's going on in that photo or maybe you do a, what what happens most mostly to me is I'll have a rough sketch of of a scene or a panel, a comic panel or whatever and it will I'll, I'll kind of rough out the perspective and I know it's wrong you know it's not perfect but it kind of gets an idea of how I want to compose the panel okay so here to give you a really basic idea of if you want to use this tool to kind of match the perspective that you already have going on in your scene I drew out these um, two boxes and say this is my composition this is you know I, I rough I drew a really rough drawing of my scene and it happens to be two boxes. It's really boring, I know. So with those other programs, um, I would not be able to find the the horizon. I wouldn't be able to find where those vanishing points are based on these boxes. But with uh, Clip Studio Paint's perspective tool, you definitely can. So what I would do is I, I have my rough drawing out and then I would come up here to the layers again and lay uh, ruler perspective ruler two point perspective um, yeah this is going to be two points perspective again this will work for one point or three point depending you know you need to know what, what your situation is and I'm assuming that you already have basic knowledge on how perspective works I might touch on that in a future video but this one's already kind of running long so now I've applied these rulers to this layer and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust use those tools I showed you earlier to um, adjust the perspective adjust the guides to this perspective so that I know that that my perspective on these is incorrect um, I know this to be true because I can't not do perfect perspective just out of my brain it would be great but I can't so I'm basically using this top square here as the guide I'm hoping that you know everything needs to be in perspective so I'm hoping that this one is close um, so anyway so I've kinda got that set up I figured out I used these lines and to match up to these guides to figure out where you know to figure out where the horizon is and where the 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 vanishing points go and in a more complex scene you might have to take more things into consideration but this is you know the basic on on how you would do this so then I create a new layer and then I adjust this layer to be lighter just as though I were penciling so now I'm on my new layer just making sure I'm on the right layer I'm on my new layer now with the perspective ruler applied and I come in and let's see now I can get these lines perfected and I will probably notice that I'm a little off um, actually that was pretty good so I'll do the same thing here so you can see I was a little off 
let's see where those corners are but it was pretty close um, and you know the more things you're adding to a scene see that that corner was way off the more things you're adding to a scene the more handy this will come to kind of rein everything in because a lot of times you'll think oh yeah this this looks good but you know really some something's way off and you might not notice it till later so this helps you kind of bring that in um, so even if you're just fudging it a little so that's basically it um, again in in the advantage of this is that in other softwares you have to set your perspective before you even start drawing and in this program you, you can start drawing you can rough in all of your ideas and then then you can take this perspective tool and correct it and get everything dialed instead of building your composition around what you thought your perspective for the scene should be instead you're coming up with a scene and then making the perspective work after the fact so it, it depends on your process but for me this works a lot better because I'm I rather just lay out the composition of the panel or the page or the piece or whatever it is I'm working on and then then come back through and get everything dialed and I'm a very process driven guy so I will come back and go over it a few times until I get it where I want it. it takes a lot of the guesswork out I think so anyway that's why I love the perspective tool I have um, maybe a couple other perspective tips that I might make videos on later on down the line um, I think this one's running a lot longer than I had even anticipated so I'm just gonna cut it off now but thank you for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>